Hello awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Starless Night by R.A. Salvatore. It's the next book in the collection. It was a New York Times bestseller after being published. I bought all this stuff when it first came out of the third trilogy. Uh, and this is basically the second book in the third trilogy and I'm 160 pages uh, through the next book. So I've been knocking these books out at a pretty quick clip. Uh, as a reminder, Ari Salvatore has 22 best-selling books on the New York Times bestseller list, so I probably don't need to give you a whole lot of information about him. Uh, we do have a lot of fun things that were happening. He was one of my favorite writer after I discovered his first book, The Crystal Shard, which I've been going back and rereading a lot of these old books that I read when I was kids. Uh, it was the, he was my first favorite author after I read The Lord of the Rings by uh, Tolkien, uh, and he became my favorite writer for a while uh, when I was a kid in grade school, and then I, I picked up this stuff. I read the first, I was I, I, I have been uh, loving fantasy stuff for a while. I read Fred Saberhagen's uh, The uh, Complete Book of Swords. I read the, uh, the Dragon Riders of Pern stuff by Anne McCaffrey and so forth after Tolkien. Uh, and then I moved to this collection of, of the D&D stuff. I started with the six books of the Dragon Lance, and then I moved uh, to this cult, this series, and I really and I devoured it a whole lot. It's very interesting to me that uh, TSR would kick off their, their, their major series uh, with new authors like Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman of Dragon Lance that were also best-selling stuff. That was the first time they'd ever written uh, novels. Uh, the first novel is Dark Walker Moonshade in the Forgotten Realms, a uh, collected journeys, like like a book universe. Uh, he's a brand new author. Ari Salvatore's a brand new author for The Crystal Shard, and now we're eight books in, and his, his writing uh, style is developing and so forth. I'm going to be giving this a 7 plus out of 10, uh, like a 7. Uh, point 0.2 or 7.3 or 7.4 uh, then I'm running down to a 7 proper uh, it's fine it's fast it's about 330 pages long it took me about four days for me to knock it out and uh, about six hours t total all told uh, for me to knock it out I've been going back and rereading these things in a quick clip uh, as a reminder I give my reviews uh, spoiler re free reviews uh, so we won't be doing any spoilers although a best-selling book that was published back years ago <laughs> Uh, and so forth, you know, what he would, <laughs> but still, I, I won't give my books in case, you know, uh, you've heard of this stuff, but you've never actually decided to go out there and read it, uh, and so forth. Uh, so basically what's happening is, is that we're picking up from Legacy, mm -hmm. and uh, Dritz Do Erden uh, and his friends uh, with, with this group of, of Mithril Hall, his, his heroes, and so forth. Um, some bad stuff happened uh, at the end, well, actually about... 8% of the way through, actually, uh, legacy uh, that has caused him to go into a little bit of a spiral uh, and so forth. And he realizes uh, from his kin, the Dark Elves, and he realizes the stuff that's been happening. Uh, so he decides uh, to leave all of his friends, leave his key possession of Gwenevar uh, with, with Regis, his, his friend Halfling, so it won't be taken from him. Uh, and he solos a journey back into the Underdark from the ground, overground stuff into the city of his big bad stuff in order to uh into the big bad menzo brands and his home his homeland that we did a deep dive into uh in a book previously in this collection called homeland and we also saw in the previous book the legacy we went back to it for uh, some scenes here and there uh, but anyway uh, he decides to head back home and 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 force his people and he knows it's probably gonna be a one-way mission right force his people to stop coming after him and stop doing some bad things to his friends that had happened in the previous book so that's basically the key journey. Uh, and then we'll find out a couple of chapters in uh, that one of his friends finds out that he has gone and she chases him uh, to Menzo Brands. And, and so that's sort of the, so uh, well, basically this, this story is basically divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is the Dritz to Orden POV story. The second part is his other friend POV journey. And the third are the things that are happening in Menzo Brands, and particularly with the, uh, the character of Jarl Axel, who's, who's the lead of a mercenary group of dark elves for you now dark elves uh, in the forgotten realms and in other places are dark evil versions of regular elves that live underground and have been punished and they're very very evil Tretz, uh, our, our point of view character for this series uh, has been born with a conscience uh, so he has uh, so he has he's he's much different he said he's a ranger uh, in in the in the first three books of the trilogy uh, he's a lot of, he's doing a lot of adventuring and fighting the good fight tracking things and so forth uh, from the underground uh, to now fully living and surviving above ground. Uh, then in the next trilogy, it's a it's a prequel trilogy, and the first book of that prequel trilogy 
homeland has his, him being trained and raised, and then he leaves his homeland at the end of it. And in the second version, he survives in the Underdark, and then he leaves the Underdark at the end of book two of that trilogy. And then in book three, he meets up, and we find out how he got his ranger powers and so forth. Um, so he definitely feels, he was definitely one of the most influential characters uh, from the era, uh, from the 80s and the 90s, when this stuff is getting published pretty heavily and being devoured by fans like me. Um, and he definitely was a key, key influence and, 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 and a generational hit in the genre of heroic fantasy. Um, and I think that's because he took after two other characters that were generational hits of theirs. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, Aragorn, the Ranger, uh, the good guy who lives, who, who lives rough and tumbled, but can track you down, can, can stealth around outdoors, has herb lore, right, uh, and so forth. So he's the Ranger type, just like Dritz is. Uh, and then uh, he is the, the good guy from the evil race, just like Elric of Mount Nibini, uh, from El uh, from Michael Moorcock's Eternal Champion series. His key key character uh, from the 60s and sometimes in the 70s. Uh, so he was a big generation of character too. So what he did was he combined these two characters into one. And sort of, I think that's where some of its popularity comes from. Again, uh, that, that's my review then of Starless Night for you folks. So I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read Starless Night? If so, what did you think about it? Would you like to talk about it in the comments below? Or if you want to talk about spoilers, well, hey, let's do so. Or the ending or whatever. Let's do it. If you enjoyed this video, why not? Hit that subscribe button. There should be a lot more of these to follow. And I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent your time with me is very humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.